Hello, welcome to Treasure Box Stories. It's time to look inside the chest to see what we are reading next. Flat Stanley and the Very Big Cookie. Stanley Lambchop lived with his mother, his father, and his little brother, Arthur. Stanley was four feet tall, about a foot wide, and half an inch thick. He had been flat ever since a bulletin board fell on him. People in Stanley's town liked having a flat boy around, especially since Stanley was always willing to lend a hand, or even a whole arm. He helped the librarian reach books that slipped under the stacks. He helped the dentist smooth out the new wallpaper in his office. And when the baker was busy, Stanley helped him frost cakes, two at a time. But one day, Stanley and Arthur went to Pete's Sweets and found that the baker wasn't busy at all. What's wrong? asked Stanley. It's the baker in the next town, said Pete. He's taking away all my business. But how, Stanley asked. What does he have that you don't? Two words, Pete said. Cake pops. Oh, cake pops. Yummy, said Arthur. Stanley elbowed his brother. What, Arthur said. They are, it's true, said Pete glumly. They are yummy. So why don't you bake them too, suggested Stanley. I never copy another baker, said Pete. I'm the one with the big ideas. The tart trend, I started that. The cupcake craze, me again. Then Pete held up a flyer. This is my chance to get back my customers, said Pete. I have to think of the next big idea by Saturday. He threw his hands in the air. A cloud of flour flew up. If I don't, my bakery is doomed. Having a food fair on Saturday. That night, Stanley and Arthur tried to think of an idea for Pete. Mini muffins? Bite-sized brownies? Everything had been done before. How about a nice coconut macaroon, suggested Mrs. Lambchop. The boys didn't know what a macaroon was, but it didn't sound like anything that could beat a cake pop. The next day was Friday. Stanley and Arthur stopped by the bakery after school. It was a mess. There was frosting everywhere. One whole table was covered with cookie dough. Candy balls rolled around on the floor. Mr. Pete, called Stanley, what's going on? Whoa, Stanley slipped on a candy ball. His flat arms made a windmill as he tried not to fall. Pete came out of the kitchen just in time to see Stanley land smack face first in the cookie dough. Arthur peeled his brother off the dough. There was a Stanley-shaped dent in it. I'm so sorry, Pete, said Stanley, but Pete was staring at the dent with a strange smile on his face. The next big idea, he said, it's big. Pete started racing around the bakery. The boys didn't know exactly what his plan was, but they pitched in. Stanley and Arthur helped mix a giant batch of cookie dough. They rolled it out on the table. Then Pete pulled up a chair. Stanley, would you climb up here and fall on the dough again? Okay, said Stanley, but does it have to be face first this time? Pete grinned and shook his head. Stanley got up on the chair. He took a deep breath and fell backward. Perfect, said Pete. Arthur, pull away the extra dough. Pete and Arthur pulled and pulled, and then they helped Stanley stand up. On the table lay a gingerbread boy. It was four feet tall, about a foot wide, and half an inch thick. Just like you, Arthur told Stanley. 
only good looking. The cookie looked even better when it was baked and decorated. Whoa, Stanley, this might sound weird, but I want to take a bite of my head. Not now, said Pete. We have three dozen kid-sized cookies to make. The next morning was the food fair. The Lamb Chops walked down Main Street. Look at that, said Mrs. Lamb Chop. There was a huge crowd outside Pete's Sweets. They were waiting to buy kid-sized cookies. But there were two cookies that weren't for sale. These are for you, said Pete. Thanks for saving the day. I always knew I had the sweetest boys in the world, said Mrs. Lamb Chop. The boys groaned and took a bite. Thanks for watching and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Bye.